Hi everyone, let's let's get started. So I'm here with Akshat Jaimini and Pavel Golub the, from Cybertech. They are going to talk about Google Summer of Code 2024, enhancing data insights for Postgres with remote things. Please warm welcome for them. Um, hello, so I will start, I will present what the Google Summer of Code is and which projects do we have this year and how all the things working. And then Akshat will present the technical stuff, the meat, right? So who am I? Uh, I'm wearing a lot of hats, as you can see. I even have like a cat hat. So uh, during my day job, I'm a senior developer at Cybertech. Also, I'm a co-founder of uh, PostgreSQL Ukraine. And this year I was uh, um, uh, uh, Postgres org admin in Google Summer of Code. Also, since I'm a PG Watch maintainer, I was a mentor. I am a mentor this year for a uh, project uh, connected with the uh, PG Watch. So, this year, it is the 20th anniversary of the Google Summer of Code. And I'm proud to be a part of Postgres team, Postgres organization, uh, we, we've been like 17 years in, uh, in, in this program. Uh, I would say this is like a, a long-standing member, a member of, uh, of the family. So uh, we have two roles. Uh, one is mentor, another is org admin. So mentorship is very important if you want to spread the knowledge about your project, if you want to have new contributors, and uh, it helps you to grow to foster not Postgres only, but Postgres related project. So this year I was mentor and org admin. Org admin is like you know, a manager. We used to like poke some students and, and mentors. They don't forget to update their statuses, etc. So Postgres organization inside Google Summer of Code is an umbrella project. So we accept not only Postgres related project, but like for, for every project, for every for every uh, for every like you know application in Postgres family, meaning if you are working with Patroni, PG Moneta, PG Agro, JDBC, Wallg, Wally, whatever, you can apply with this project, and we will mentor you, right? Uh, so this way, we are trying to foster not only Postgres code base, but the whole family, the whole the whole ecosystem. So in this year, we had only five projects, not that many comparing to the previous years. So uh, two of them for PG Moneta uh, by Shahriar, Sultanpur, and uh, Chao Gu. So uh, for JDBC array support by, by Aryan Markum, and uh, for PG Watch by Aksha Jaimini, and the uh, PG Agrol by Henrico de Carvalho. So is it, is it five projects, is it many or not? So for example, in previous year, the whole program had, had like 1,000 of contributors, meaning 1,000 projects from 65 countries. And as you, as you can see, we have twice as much as mentors. Why? Because we assign at least two mentors per project. Because we are not only mentoring the code, we are not only mentoring the, uh, the, the code base, but we are trying to help a contributor to be a part of a community. So we are like explain, explaining how things are working in our community, what tools we are using, etc., etc. So uh, 168 open source organizations took part in the previous year. And as you can see, the success rate is, is really high, 93%. And uh, if, so uh, 1,000 contributors, and if you want to know how many applications were, you can multiply by 10. So 10,000 applications easily. So we need to like filter a lot of them. So in the, in the next year, uh, we are looking for mentors, we are looking for project ideas, and we're looking for contributors. If you think that you are not good enough to be a mentor, that's not true. As I said, we not only 
uh, mentoring the code, we are mentoring relations. So you can just be a part of a community mentor, right? So project ideas. It's really ideas, you know? You, you don't need to have like, it's in the final stage or, or with an excellent description. You put it into the wiki and then um, the, uh, the applicant take this idea and start to work with it, right? So start to write its, uh, their own description, their own plan, how to, uh, how to implement it. And of course, we need contributors. So if you're working in academia, please let your students know. If you're working in corporate world, whatever, some junior position are still eligible for, for, the, for uh, this um, uh, program. Um, yeah. Uh, that's it for, for the Google Summer of Code part. So if you have any questions, please ask them at the end of the talk. And yeah. the stage is yours. Yeah, so good morning, everyone. Uh, am I audible? Is this working properly? OK. So today, uh, today's topic is about how we can enhance data insights uh, in Postgres using the concept of remote syncs. So, to do that, we'll go with the following topics. We'll first see what is PG Watch. I assume some of the people in the crowd must have been using PG Watch in their production environments. Then we understand the concept of syncs in PG Watch. Why did we need the, this new concept of remote syncs? How does it work under the hood? And finally, we'll see how you can uh, develop your own custom implementations and then set it up with your uh, PG Watch instances. And if time permits, we'll also go through a live demo. So before that, a little bit about myself. I'm a computer engineering undergraduate uh, from TIIT India, and I'll be graduating soon in 2025. I joined the Postgres community back in 2023 through Google Summer of Code. And at that time, I worked on the PG web testing harness. So basically, that particular tool is to test the latest builds of our official website. right? And along with that, I have also been contributing to the wider PG Postgres ecosystem, mainly in extensions in the PGRX part of it. Yeah, so let's get started. What is PG Watch? So PG Watch is a pretty simple to use monitoring tool. Some of the pretty cool features that it comes with is that it's easy to set up. You just need to pull the Docker image and just configure the uh, uh, specific user in your databases uh, with some privileges and you're good to go. PG Watch uh, not only supports the collection of existing metrics, but you can also define your own custom metric definitions using SQL. It's very low on resources, very lightweight, and again, pretty easy to use. We have a Grafana dashboard specifically uh, for just the monitoring UI part. You can visualize all your measurements easily using Grafana. You can also set up alerting using Grafana, as well as PG timetable scheduler. And lastly, it also supports the ability to export measurements directly to some well-known formats. And this last point is the primary focus of today's talk. So this is uh, how the PG Watch UI looks like. So this is where you add your databases, configure what metrics you want to measure. Then we have a separate tab to uh, define those metrics, like as I uh, covered in the previous slide that you can define your own metrics using SQL. You, we have a separate tab for that. Then you can even have specific group of certain metrics, uh, which we call presets. And then we have another tab to just monitor the logs of PG Watch, see what's happening in there. And then, obviously, we have the Grafana dashboards. So the primary architecture of PG Watch is actually based on three components. First of all, we have the sources. These sources can be your Postgres databases, Petroni clusters, or any other derivatives that we support. Next up, uh, we have metrics we discussed already, defined parameters which you can extract from the database, just tell you something about uh, what the database is up to. And then we have syncs, in which you actually store the measurements that have been taken for that particular metric, right? And within these syncs, with uh, the latest version of PG Watch, that is version three, we have a pretty cool feature that you can have multiple syncs running in parallel. So right now, we support three formats primarily. We have Postgres, which is basically your Swiss Army knife for all your use cases. Then we have JSON to just have a more comprehensible format, which you can share across teams or expose it through a REST API, whatever you want to do with it. Then we have Prometheus, 
one of the most widely used tools in the monitoring world, right? So we have all these three formats, and with the ability to run parallel syncs, you can basically have a sync in which you are storing all your measurements in Postgres, and at the same time, you can have a alerting system set up on Prometheus that runs in parallel, right? So this feature provides you a lot of flexibility in how you are working with your measurements. But there is always a scope to improve, right? We, uh, this particular feature has, in, like, it increases the number of possibilities that you have in terms of storing your measurements or even deriving some insights from them. So with that goal in mind, we, you can have some, you, uh, so with that particular thing in mind, you might want to use some separate format for storing your data. Uh, data. For example, you might want to run some analytical lo loads on your measurements. So you might want to use a column-first format like CSV or Parakeet. Maybe you have some sort of an internal tool within your organization which derives some insights from those particular measurements. So it would be good if you could just directly attach that tool inside PG Watch uh, without any uh, writing any other extra wrappers. So with that particular goal in mind, we had three points for a solution that we wanted in this regards. First, the solution should be pretty easy to use for the user. You should not have to uh, like go through a lot of documentation to just implement it. It should be easy to maintain for us as well, right? And again, it should reduce the overhead for all the users. So naturally, when uh, we started off with uh, writing the proposal for this Google Summer of Code project, the first solution was that, OK, let's add support for every possible storage out there. At that time, um, I was thinking more in terms of CSV, Parakeet files, like more of our general purpose formats. But a quick call with Pablo, and I realized that there are a lot of ways in which you can store your data or even run some processes on it. And if we had gone down that particular path, uh, it would have been a, a nightmare to maintain it. And this is what me and Pablo would have been while trying to manage all that mess. So we completely rejected that idea. And next solution was to maybe have a separate repository. So if anybody has used Open Telemetry before, Open Telemetry has a separate contrib repository in which they add support for more third party tools. Right. So we thought that, OK, we could have something similar to this for PG Watch as well. But there were two major problems. There would have been too many implementations to maintain. and Another thing that we realized was that each and every implementation has a very different uh, motivation behind it, and it varies, according, varies uh, per user. So we'll take an example for that. So let's say in that contrib repository, we uh, designed a, a sync to store your data measurements in a parakeet file. Right. So this particular implementation stores all of your uh, measurements in a single fi parakeet file all the database uh, for all the databases. Like, this is a good implementation to start with. But it could happen that uh, one user jumps in and they say that, uh, I want my data segregated by the database name. Or it, we could go a, li uh, a little deeper, and we could separate it by database and even partition it based on the timestamp. Right, that is a valid concern, and if they use our previous implementation, it, intro uh, it in introduces an unnecessary overhead for them to actually work with this data. Now, we can have another application in which we have a separate user who wants their measurements to be segregated by the metric name. Again, we can have multiple levels within this, but the problem remains the same. There is a lot of conflict of interests in this particular area, and uh, it just creates an extra overhead for the users. So with all of these realizations, we decided that, OK, let's give our users the power to do that. So we uh, pivoted towards a way in which you could write your own sync implementations, and we could provide a much easier way to connect them directly into PG Watch. And with this, we came to the concept of remote syncs. So right now, uh, PG Watch looks something like this. We have the sources, which are the databases. Then we have PG Watch configured in push or pull mode. And it's constantly uh, getting all of your measurements and just dumping it into all the sync formats present out there. 
Now our goal is to support any format that uh, is possible. So to do that, we introduced an RPC layer in between. So the, uh, this RPC layer uh, is what PG Watch will interact with, and this layer is responsible for managing how the data is stored into any format that is behind it. Some of the advantages that we get by using this particular, particular implementation is that PG Watch becomes completely sync agnostic. Right, so at this point, we have three natively supported things. First is Postgres, JSON, and Prometheus. So instead of having tens or twenties of more uh, sync implementations supported natively, we only have a single implementation called the RPC sync. And this is what uh, fits into PG Watch. And since we don't uh, care about the sync types, you can have a parakeet file on the other end. PG Watch won't know whatever uh, format is out there. You can, maybe you don't want to use Prometheus anymore, so you want to switch to Cygnos. You can have that. You can just write your own uh, sync to connect it to PG Watch. Next up, maybe you have some sort of a custom implementation, like sort of a metric lake where you are storing all of your measurements in the iceberg format and querying it using data fusion. Like the list is endless. You can do anything because at the end of the day, PG Watch acts as an RPC client. And all of these things, whatever format they are, are simply RPC services. One more advantage that we get with this particular feature are that syncs become truly decoupled. So right now, uh, if you want to implement your own syncs with this particular interface, you don't need to worry about the details of how PG Watch is working, how it's getting the measurements, and how it's storing them back into this particular sync format. Right, all you need, uh, all PG Watch knows is that there is a particular function that I need to call with this data and it will get stored in the sync. Another advantage of having this RPC layer in between is that it makes the implementation of these things pretty easy. Right, so just to recap what all we discussed earlier, we have PG Watch, an easy to use monitoring solution for Postgres. Uh, we have three primary pillars of PG Watch, which are sources, metrics, and sinks. Sinks are basically units where you can store your uh, measurements that have been extracted by PG Watch. And remote sinks provide an easy to use interface through which you can implement your own custom sinks. Now, uh, coming to the golden question how you can develop your own personalized sinks? So, to do that, uh, we provide you with an abstraction called the receiver. This is an interface in Golang. And whenever you have any new measurements, the uh, update measurements function is triggered. So basically, uh, what happens is PG Watch calls the update measurement function, sends the measurement message, which is basically uh, whatever measurements uh, it has taken from your database sources. And uh, this update measurements function has a body defined by you. And it acts according to it. And if there are any errors or any information that it wants to throw back to PG Watch, like saying that, okay, you sent me some wrong, uh, the data in some wrong format, or there is some problem with this, it can populate the log message field. Now, in PG Watch, we also have a concept of something called sync requests. So what happens is that maybe uh, you want to add some new databases for monitoring, or maybe you want to remove that particular database. Maybe you have a new metric definition that you want to uh, add to your presets. So these changes are uh, required to be communicated to the sync as well, because since you are storing the data in those things, it should know what is the exact state of the system. So for that, we uh, have a separate function called the sync metric function, which populates the sync channel, uh, which comes uh, directly with your receiver. Yeah, uh, so if you take a look at the overall design of this particular tool, we have PG Watch triggering the update measurements function, uh, sending in the measurement message, then we have the reply pointer string, goes to the receiver, and the receiver uses the definition that you have given and stores the entire data in that particular implementation. Now, we get a sync metric request in between, and then we have a Go routine which runs in parallel, consuming from the sync channel uh, and 
executing according to your requirement. So in this case, we have uh, implemented a Kafka a receiver in which you can publish your measurements to a Kafka broker, right? So in this particular uh, handle sync metric implementation, you can uh, handle a delete and an add option. With the delete option, you can easily uh, remove the database from your connection registry, and with the add option, you can add new database topics for new databases. So, uh, so if you head on to this particular repository, uh, which is pgwatch3 RPC server, you'll see that we have uh, multiple examples of various implementations. We have uh, implementations for tools like ClickHouseDB, uh, Kafka, and even S3. And we even have implementations for the simplest of formats out there, even to a text file. And when you open up this repository, you will see an interface called the receiver interface. And you can see that we have two functions here, the update measurements function and the sync metric function. So now, to implement your own sync, all you need to do is to create your own receiver type. You can have any parameters within it. You can have the connection registry, which is basically, OK, I have this database. And for this particular database, I have this particular connection that I want. Then you can have the URI parameter, which tells the receiver uh, where, the, where your Kafka cluster is running. And then you have uh, other options, like we have auto add in this particular case. Next up, you need to provide your own definitions for the update measurements function. So in this case, we have uh, uh, we pick up uh, the connection for that particular database from the connection registry, and we just go on publishing whatever we want to do with this particular uh, connection. And we have a simple handle sync metric function, which basically handles all the sync requests that PGWatch is sending. So to implement your own syncs, this is all you need to do. You just need to define a type. You need to populate the update measurements function. And if, if you want, you can have a handle sync metric function. It totally depends on what you want from the implementation. Now, if you want to set up your remote syncs, all you need to do is just up, uh, append it uh, to the list of syncs that you already have. So if you are uh, building PGWatch from source, you can have the sync command line argument, uh, which basically has a URI of where your sync is running with the RPC uh, prefix. If you are using the YAML config that comes with PGWatch, you can just append it directly to the uh, list of syncs that we have. Uh, as you can see, we have multiple syncs running in parallel. So we have a CSV receiver, which basically uh, connects directly to PGWatch, sees that, OK, we. Uh, directly connects to PGWatch and basically receives the, the data and stores it into separate uh, CSV files for each database. We also have a Kafka receiver, which we discussed earlier, that you can just publish uh, measurements to specific Kafka topics per database. And uh, as we discussed, we also have uh, the error log messages that are returned by the sync to PGWatch. So yeah, uh, it's time for a live demo. So for this particular implementation, just a second. Yeah, so for this particular implementation, we have implemented a sync using the tiny llama large language model. So what is happening is that uh, we are getting the measurements from PGWatch. And we are using the, uh, we are uh, passing those measurements through tiny llama, prompting it to derive some insights from those measurements, and then storing them back uh, into uh, Postgres. We also have a REST API, which exposes these insights directly uh, for use by uh, various uh, dashboard interfaces. So yeah, we'll get started with this. OK. So let's start PG Watch. So first we spin up our uh, sources database and the Grafana dashboards uh, that will interact with PG Watch. Okay, now we can just start this. 
to run your syncs, all you need to do is just go here, specify a port on which uh, the sync will be listening for the data. And we have a separate parameter called the batch size. So uh, batch size in this context uh, tells the large language model at uh, what number of uh, new measurements you should actually run some analytics. So just for ease of use and uh, at this particular time, we are setting it to one. So for each and every measurement, it will try to generate some new insights. Right, so just let's run this. So uh, we have, just a second, yeah. So to uh, use the tiny llama model, we are using the Olama provider. And then we have this particular script that spins up the tiny llama model. Yeah, we can get started with our sync. Okay, and this is, so since we are uh, listening on the 8000 board, we have specified the sync like this, RPC protocol, one uh, local host and 8000 port. So yeah, uh, we can see that PG was started, it connected directly to the sync. Uh, so initially it sent uh, some measurements with an empty database name, so our sync handled that. And it returned uh, an error at this particular point. Now. Now let's uh, spin up a dashboard here to actually see what the LM is generating. Yeah, it started generating some stuff here. Okay. Yeah, so if we head on to the PG Watch management UI, so we can have, yeah, so you can see that we are monitoring these two databases, uh, which are PG Watch and Postgres, right? And, to act, and we have these particular measurements for these databases, like 12 measurements for DB1 and 19 measurements for DB2. And in this particular tab, we can see uh, what all, uh, insights that the LM has been able to generate. So we have this lengthy paragraph on how you, uh, how you can improve the resource utilization patterns. And then we have some measurements from our previous runs, like this one, here's an analysis of the provided performance metrics. We have basically everything uh, that the LLM came up with this. And the primary goal of this demo is to show that you can fit in any type of system behind PG Watch and it will just run. All you need to do is just write a simple interface. Now, if we go into the implementation details of this particular, just a second, yeah, of this particular sync, separate terminal, I hope it's visible. Yeah, so uh, as I said, you can, <clears throat> we have the CMD folder here, which in which we have all our implementations. We can dive into the Llama receiver. Right, so we have uh, this main.go file. So you can see we have specified all the command line arguments that we require. We have the port number, server URI, the URI of the Postgres database that we want to store our uh, measurements in. We have another option to uh, uh, enable that, okay, we want to share these insights using a REST interface, right? And yeah, so we basically <laughs> register this particular receiver using the RPC uh, library in Go. And this is the final update measurements. Yeah, so this is our update measurements function. We are handling some errors here that, okay, you should uh, send me data for a valid database. Uh, you should have some valid metric that you are sharing with me. There should be at least some data that you are sharing. It should not be empty that uh, whatever you're sending to me. Yeah, and then we have various utility functions. Uh, we have all of this stuff in this particular file, but the only thing that PG Watch is aware of is the update measurements function. And that is how simple it is to implement uh, these particular things. So, yeah, so this is all, uh, it for the demo. Okay. 
so yeah, uh, if anyone has any questions, we are open for them. Okay, questions, please. So we have no questions, but thanks, yeah. thanks a lot for your talk. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So it's time for lunch. Thank you. Great talk. Yeah, it was fast. No. Yeah.